Hi everybody, welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobby Link Japan. And it is. And it is, and we're back. This is episode, what, 105 now? 106. 105. Okay. One's time, 105. 106 is. It'll have a Episode 100 and something. <laughs> oh, that's less than 10. All right, <laughs> so. Okay, uh, Ryan, I got some Gundam to show. Oh, but yeah. I know you've got something you oh, want yeah, to show. Oh, yeah, I do. So why don't you uh, bring that out here right that's now? That's my chair. Yeah. As everyone knows, I like the old Mac K. Yeah. Uh, the camel has arrived. So, Sid, the camel has arrived. That's right. And they call it the Lunar Tactical Reconnaissance Machine LUM 168. That's right, because I when it. I'm on missions on the moon, I need a camel. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. I know. So Is it a question? Model. I stumped you. But I. You know what I like about this kit? Look at the size of these, Sid. Yeah, I heard you like this stuff. Look at the big mirror. <laughs> the big windscreen. Yeah. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, well, actually the figures the, uh, are Shizu big. Shizuoka Hobby Show. They yeah. all, all painted up and everything. It looked so great. Yeah, it's actually... And you know this kit, I mean... The scary thing always about the Machina Krieger stuff is... Um, painting it. But this yeah. kit is actually just basically white. Yeah. Well, you can get out that grey that... Similar to that yeah. uh, Millennium Falcon you did, dirty that up a bit. So, you know what, I'm tempted, I am tempted to actually, I, I mean, I always say I like Mac K, but I never build one. Yeah. Because I'm intimidated. Yeah. With some yeah, because water slides. Yeah, because of that sheet of <laughs> Well, I've, I've done worse. But yeah, um, the camel is here. All right. Jump on it. Well, that's the camel, sir. That's definitely, definitely cool. The one thing about Mac, though, is they have like the, the weirdest names, <laughs> like the camel. Does that does that remind you of a camel? Maybe it does. I don't know. Would you? It doesn't want remind to take me of a camel, camel into battle. Maybe. No. I but know. I think it's all of the military terms, like from the Second World War. So maybe That's they're true. thinking desert warfare or yeah, something yeah. like that. Okay. All right. Well, I've got actual Gundam to show. You've got Gundam. And I'm gonna start with a small one. Of course, this is the perfect strike Gundam. The perfect strike. We showed this at the uh, hobby show in Tokyo. There, the model okay. show. Okay. Yeah, Bandai had this set up here and. Uh, uh, you can see that it's it, the basic strike, of course, but what makes it the perfect strike is it comes with the, you know, the launcher pack. Oh, all that backpack. Wow, I, I like this, this shot right oh, here. Yeah. Look, at, look at all that that's stuff mad. that's got in this backpack. It's like some chief. Yeah, and it comes with stickers, right? So, of course, uh, anybody who's familiar with the strike kits, and uh, a lot of people have already built the mm -hmm. HD strike, uh, they'll know what's inside this box. I don't need to open it because everything's right there. Inside, you can see it, how great it is. I actually really like the Strike. It's one of my favorite Gundam designs of all time. Yeah. So anytime there's a Strike of HD or MG, I'm really excited. And that backpack actually looks yeah sweet. Okay, and I, I've got this uh, Shinanji Stein here. Yeah. And we already talked about this, so yes. I'm not going to open the box. But uh, I'm going to use this as a segue because we're going to talk about uh, Robert. 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 Our Robert 184. 184, yes. Gunplug videos and reviews on his uh, YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, we actually met Robert. Yes, we did. In Akihabara. We went down there. and uh, Very he, nice guy. He's a nice guy. And he was traveling around Japan. Yes. And uh, uh, trying to taste the local cuisine and all these different prefectures. And then was he it like said, 45 prefectures yeah. in one day or 15 Not prefectures one day, in one week or something? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he's like, yeah, I'm coming to Tokyo and uh, I'd like to meet you guys. So we're like, sure. We went down there. We met him. Uh, of course, he had his camera with him, so he took some pictures and uh, put a video of us up. But uh, after that video went up, uh, a lot of people, even on my like Facebook and stuff, they're like, "Sid, you met Robert. What's he like? What is like? What's he like? What? How does he look? Yeah, how does he look? How does he look? Well, like I say, what's he like? Everybody who's uh, seen his videos, they know his voice. Very soothing. Yes, he's a nice guy. Soothing. He's great to talk to. Yes. And uh, as, when it comes to like, you know, how does he look, right? <laughs> He looks good. He looks healthy. Yeah, very healthy. He's a, he's a yeah. guy, you know. Very healthy man. Yes. Very healthy man. He's a male. He's a male. Yes. I would say even possibly he could be considered attractive. Yes. But I'm not yeah. the guy to ask about that. He's over 20, I'd say. Oh, I don't know. I never asked his age. Yeah. 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 But, but um, he's got passports. I assume he's, yeah. uh, he's he old travels. enough to travel. He travels. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so by now, after all this Robert videos and all this talk, People know that uh, we are we are connected, connected to uh, yes, Robert and his YouTube channel. We have been sponsoring YouTube him. Channel. We have been sponsoring him, and we have been uh, sending kits his way when they come, so that he can get them all filmed and get them up, and people can see mm. right away what these kits involve mm. and how they look and stuff like that. So this Shinanja Stein, actually, this this very one, 
Yes. He's going to be heading off to uh, Robert's house. It and might already be there when you watch this video. That's right. It might already be there. Actually, you, it might already be up on his side. It could be. Yeah. It could be. He's pretty quick. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to do, you know, he just went through uh, all the pre-pictures, tasting the local cuisine. And I don't know about if you know, Ryan, but uh, Tochigi is famous for a couple of different types of oh, uh, yeah, cuisine. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in, here in Sano, what's, what's the famous food? Well, it's ramen. Ramen. Do you like ramen? I love ramen. For those of you who don't know, ramen is the noodles. Noodles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cup well, noodle, ramen. And people slurp them. Yes. And I don't like ramen. I love it. It's, 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 it's Maybe it has beautiful. to do with like the, the, the way you eat it. When I, when you I know, was growing up. You don't up, have to make noise. I know, I know. And then they look at you like. <laughs> when I was going out at the dinner table, my father was pretty strict. You, mm -hmm. know, you know, we don't watch television. We eat food and we don't talk with our mouths full. And uh, we'd make as little noise as possible because it's gross having to listen to someone chew. But when I came to Japan, first time it was the exact opposite. There's televisions going on. People are like talking while they're putting rice in their face. And they're slurping their noodles. And I thought, well, this is the noisiest place I've ever been to. <laughs> well, ramen, you don't have to slurp. Yeah, yeah it, but, uh, I don't. I, I find actually, it hard. Uh, like, I'm like you. I, was... I actually just, I put it in my mouth. And, and bite it and the excess will fall down and I'll put it in my mouth. And then of course, uh, the Japanese look at me like I'm just crawled up from under a rock. It's like, dude, does that guy, now The great thing about ramen is there's different stocks, like a miso stock yeah. or a pork stock, yeah. and they have all like stuff in it. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really recommended. It's Not good. everyone likes it, which is for sure. Okay. Uh, well, continuing on that, that line of thought, when yes. it, uh, we're talking about food and Tochigi can, which is where we are now. Have you been to Utsunomiya? Yes, I have. Yeah, what's Utsunomiya famous for? Gyoza. Gyoza, famous gyoza. The uh, dumplings. Dumplings, for those who don't know. Actually, I have some right here. <laughs> this is gyoza. We sell this. This is actually, here's, you can see what it looks like here. This is actually a plastic model kit. That we and sell. We sell these. You can buy these gyoza and you can and make, make them it. yourself. But uh, actually, because of Robert, you know, he loved the gyoza. Here it is. He loved the gyoza in um, Utsunomiya. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna send him this. That's a good <laughs> so, idea. So Robert, when you get this box, there's gonna be a little surprise in here for and you. And there's a little history about this. Okay. Um, it was actually in a, in a movie set in the, what's well, a modern a shoot, shot, I think last yeah, year. only a couple years ago. Uh, set in Tokyo, I think in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think someone here saw this and we're like, this would be a great product to sell at HLJ. Yeah. And we're giving it to Robert. Yeah, so Robert, you got some gyoza coming your way. Make it. Do not put it in the microwave. You have to paint it. Yeah, you have to put some wrong here. Do you use glue wrong? Anyway. actually quite a hot kid. I'm going gonna, gonna to leave yes, this yes, here because yes. i got to put this in the box and send it off to him in a couple minutes. And uh, you want to talk about your Kong now? My big Kong, yeah. That's right. Please me show to bring me your Kong. Around. Yeah. So Sid, this yeah. is what I've done so far. As you can see, we have his uh, very attractive hands. Looks good. And his arms. And also what people didn't know is that he actually has missile pods on the sides. That is pretty cool. Yeah, so he's all opened up and I showed before his head pops open. Mm -hmm. But I have finished the legs and I've actually finished the kit oh, really? without okay. any weathering or anything on it. So let me just uh, demonstrate the legs. So here we have a leg. We sure do. Uh, you can see here we have a bit of movement in there. Let's have a bit of movement up here. Mm -hmm. Is it like the uh, the elbow joint? Uh, it yeah, has those pretty, grooves? pretty much. Oh, you that'll can, make it solid. So, well, this thing is pretty straightforward. You just uh, need to find where this stuff snaps. I, I would recommend, um, you know, gluing the parts down that need to be glued down. Um, just because if you do want to play with this guy a lot, um, you probably just want some stuff stuck down. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I really love is these feet. Check out the, like, the pads. And they do move a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's like it's so incredibly well done, and there's like um, there's this, there's another option. We can have even a bigger foot, like mm -hmm. a bigger toe, to actually solidly plant him on the ground. Mm -hmm. Let's just check out all the like working in there and all the vents, and just the, the amount of detail on this guy is is just nuts. It's cool. Yeah, and these legs are nice and solid. So I have my two legs here. I have my groin region here. <laughs> yeah, you hold that groin region very. <laughs> Very yeah. securely. So it's a very sturdy groin region. We snap it on there, and you can see I've done it upside down. Yeah, so, so let's uh, do that again. again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would have thought you would know how to handle <laughs> your groin region. <laughs> I'm inexperienced. You know. I'm but a simple country bumpkin from South Africa. <laughs> That's right. 
So, and you can have you can have an idea now of like how this like the posability would work. Yeah, and as a gorilla, he's gonna be leaning. Yeah, you, know, you, you want him on his his first. So, yeah. um, give me a sec and let me get that set up. Okay. And uh, we can have a look. All right. So, Sida, that's my Iron Kong. Yeah, most you know, impressive. It is cool. I built a Zoid some time ago. Yes, yeah, Sida, I know. And uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I got it right here. Yeah. Yeah. It's been made a My <laughs> goodness, Ryan. <laughs> Damn dirty ape. See what happens when I step out of the room. Uh, they're yeah. just playing, dude. Just playing. Yeah. You know, so they're playing. They're, they're playing leapfrog, but yeah, somebody's not very good at yeah, it. Yeah, they're just good buddies. All right. Know? Okay. Yeah. The possibilities with your zoids are endless. <laughs> but let me just pull this. Pull it out. Yeah, that yeah. would help. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, that that Kong is pretty big. Oh, right, thanks. But, but how does it I'm compare to the previous master grade of all? No, okay. Let's no, no. <laughs> we'll put it back over here. You know, it's good it's to okay. have an impressive Kong. You know, yeah. ladies love it. Really? <sighs> no, no when you end it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's talk okay, about let's, questions. Okay, let's let's get into let's get this. This is a mix. I think this is probably from Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Kyle J. Chambliss. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sid and Ryan, what do you guys think of the new Bandai Sunrise Sunrise Valve Rave Sunrise starting series? in April? I've That's an anime, yeah. Yeah, I, I, actually I watched the guy's video. He put a link on the Hobbylink TV mm -hmm. and it actually looks pretty cool. Yeah. Very interesting kit design. I hope the story's good, but it looks phenomenal. Yeah. I was thinking Macross when I was watching it, but they all do those yeah, like missiles there's, flying. There's and, kind of a, a gap right now. Yeah. Like we, we have need the, a Gundam, show. The, Gun, the Gundam animes right now seem to be kind of lower key and age and stuff like that. And nothing has really come in and taken the spot of like Macross. Well, the design of the, the mech was kind of almost like the um, Evangelion, like the kind yeah. of skinny cell mech, which yeah. is quite popular now. But it looked beautiful. And I recommend anyone to go to the Hobbylink TV wall and just check out the video and yeah. leave a comment. Check out the link to check out the video. Yep. Uh, next is from Roger Ball. Hey, Sid and Ryan, I have an idea for an episode. Support ships. I have a Dendrobium, the 1,550th scale one. I mm -hmm. guess he built it long ago. Loved how it added to the story of Gunpla sitting on my desk. I see kits, kits around for some of the smaller support vehicles, but not the big ships. I would love to bring on the Dendrobium. Yeah, but the that Dendrobium that you want to build is the 1144 scale. How much is Monsters, it 30,000. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's big. Yeah. But uh, I think what he's referring to is the 550 scale, which is considerably smaller. So you're actually getting, for example, the Dendrobium that he built. But it's only about this big. So you can build it, stick it on your desk. It looks cool. Of course, you don't have a fifth. 550 scale Gundam to put put with it. I thought you would be able to build like SD. as a model kit. <laughs> nah, you, you have to just get a figure. But uh, I mean, they're, they're cool. There, there's a couple other ones that it, in that that scale, that size that you we can uh, bring on the show. We yeah. can show. Has anyone yeah. built the big Dendrobium? Could they post yeah. photos? Like I want to build that, but it's unless we have like a hundred and. You're gonna build it, and then you're gonna take your baby out of the baby <laughs> kit. And you're gonna put it on a pillow, and then you're gonna put the dendrobium in the baby crib because there's gonna be nowhere else to store it. Actually, I had a, on the weekend, like my wife and daughter came back and uh, from their parents' place, and I had to pack all of my like 80% of all my like Gundam, all my, all my kits, and all my figures into a box and put it in the cupboard. Yeah. It was been, very sad. You've been neutered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else does he say? Yeah, I think we answered it. Next is John. Okay, John. Hey guys, I think he's from the. This is from the blog. Hey guys, thanks for explaining the different grades of kits. I wanted to ask if there is any way to get the RG book and mm. that came with the pre-order of the RG Zeta. Also, any tips to build Zoids for the first time? Thank you for taking time out to do this. Uh, the book that came with the Zeta, I think, was just with the first run. Okay. And uh, I do not believe that... Well, if you didn't get it, there's no way to replace it because Bandai doesn't sell it individually. Like you, okay. If you didn't get a manual, you... T Contact Bandai and they'll send you. A, they'll sell you a manual. It's like 500 yen or something. But that book is something completely different from the kit. It's not. It does not consider part of the package. Okay. So I do not think that you can just get a replacement. Okay. And uh, if it didn't come in the box that that you received when you made your purchase, there's a good chance that yours isn't one of the first oh, run that Bandai okay. pushed out. And Bandai actually, their very first load they released was uh, fairly few. Quite okay. Fewer than it normally would be. And then right after they put out more. So I think that they, they did that to keep the, the RG book kind of rare-ish. Okay. So it's a collector's so item. I, uh, I don't <laughs> think people are going to be buying it off eBay or anything like that. But I don't think you can get one easily. Okay. I think you have to be one of the people that gets it in the box. 
And yeah, tips for Zoids first time. Um, actually, it's so straightforward. Yeah. I don't think you need to be afraid. Just follow your manual. Yeah. And uh, go slowly. Yeah, if go slowly. And uh, but enjoy it. It's actually it's it's a blast and pretty quick. Yeah. Next is Jason. Hey guys, thanks for the fun show. Thank mm -hmm. you. Have you ever tried to build a diorama with your Gundams? Have you ever put the next to N scale or HO scale buildings? I suppose I would love to build a couple of dioramas, but lack the time to do it from scratch. I haven't really done a diorama. I did take my 160th strike freedom, perfect grade, and I found a couple of vehicles that were 160th as well, or close enough, and I put them together in the scene, but not really. I would diorama love so to do a diorama. If you're good at it, it shows and they're amazing to look at but you have to have a high level skill yeah. we um to do diorama. we sell a lot of diorama accessories yeah here. yeah especially and, um, with the military modeling they love that stuff. oh yeah there's a ton there's so, so much stuff i would love i mean I, i'd love to just take a few diorama pieces and put the kong on it and see yeah. what it looks like just as an idea if i decide to do that i'll, I'll for sure bring it on the show it, in some ways uh plastic model people are we're, we're kind of getting lucky like uh they have these things called like MS hangers now and uh, even third party like not Bandai are making these hangers that you can basically assemble and have this 3D environment that you can drop your mech in front of and it still is open on the side so yeah, you can take true. pictures. It, it looks good, of course. It's not a diorama per se that you're putting together from scratch but it still serves its purpose and you can kind of give a little background story to your, yeah. to your kit when you're photogra uh, photography. It's the same uh, with the, the military yeah. diorama pieces. Like you can buy bases, you can buy yeah. buildings, you can buy people. And destroy buildings. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's just how you just decide how to weather it all so yeah. it all fits together. Like this would just look weird without some yeah. effects on it. Maybe but let's uh, hit the next guy. OJ. Hey, hey OJ. OJ. Hey guys. Good show as always. Loving the Iron Kong. However, you've... Ah, yes. Some people pointed this out. However, you've put the shoulders on the wrong sides. Yes, I did. And I fixed that. I did notice it, and that's why you should read the manual. Because yeah. I just thought, ah, this just fits together now. That's Legos. Yeah, I just thought, ah, these yeah. shoulders are all the same. <laughs> but they're not. And it's, <laughs> I found that out, like, you actually needed the yeah, rocket to rest on here. I and, messed and, otherwise um, we would just... I noticed I put this piece back to front, but uh, actually I think it's, no, it's okay now. But yeah, yeah, just, uh, that's, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. And yeah, just be sure to read the manual. <laughs> Who's ever doing this? Well, it's good. I think all the viewers who are very knowledgeable. They'll, I'm they'll surprised point out they noticed. Mistake. Yeah, it's. I'm um, not surprised. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But uh, yeah, he ends by saying, "Looking sweet, though." Thanks. Uh, next is Ensign Shika. Hey, Sid and Ryan. Mm -hmm. I do not have a question, but I do have a suggestion. Can you guys do a video f to recap all the Gundam kits that were released last year? Yes, I know it's already February, but I would love to see you guys make a video like you guys did in episode two. 22 and 23, that's when Sid was solo. Pretty please? Yeah, that's when I was It's a solo. nice idea, actually. Like a recap? It's, I will give it some thought. Yeah. The thing is, it takes quite a bit of preparation. And uh, all the kits that released like, last year, I only built a fraction of them. Yeah. So I can show what I built, but I would just be showing stuff that we've already shown in previous yeah. episodes. But if we want to give a rundown of like my, by month like we did, we can still show the boxes yeah. and stuff. I don't mind doing that either. Uh, yeah, I remember so. those episodes. They were well received. Mm -hmm. Next is from Acid. Hey, Sid and Ryan. Oh, hi, I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I lived in Melbourne. Are you like feeling kinship? Homesick, yeah. Yeah? Homesick. Even you, though it's a you, city of you like and acid three go or together four million. Like, <laughs> yeah, we know each other. We lived together. Next, next door neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like me and Bill from Canada. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad to know someone from Melbourne is watching. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not like Sid. I can't just start talking about Australian football, though. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, let me start by saying I really like the show. I used to build model planes, but that was 20 odd years ago. Mm -hmm. On a recent trip to Japan, I discovered Gunpla and was an instant convert. Currently building my first kit, MG Strike Freedom. Awesome kit. I've learned a lot by watching the various episodes and tutorials, but I do have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, question one. Gundam markers with spray paint slash top coats. I've colored some parts of my model with Gundam markers, when I want to spray with a gloss top, top coat uh, in prep for decals, which I've ordered, mm -hmm. it caused some of the markers to run. Yeah. Odd thing is only one particular color ran. The other two colors stayed just fine. Do you have an insight of what's going on? Was using the Tamiya TS Clear? Uh, first off, you really have to 
give it time after you do those panel lines with those gunner markers or the coloring with the gunner markers to, for it to dry. Because it, it takes a while too, it's not like instant. Uh, also, um, if you're doing a top coat, I tend to do a very light mist first, yeah. trying to at least protect those panel lines before I pour the, the uh, real top coat on. Also, uh, Tamiya TS Clear. Tamiya top coats have a reputation for being very, um, how do you say, strong. Like they warn you when using them for decals and things like mm -hmm. that. They can wreck your decals. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me that uh, the, the Tamiya is just maybe a little bit too harsh. Like Mr. Reacting Hobby? Against, or? Uh, I use the uh, Mr. Hobby, the okay. goons, and I have, don't have really any problems. Okay. But uh, the Tamiya, I've heard that they're, they can be pretty aggressive. Aggressive? Yeah. Our next question is, um, out of the plastic nippers that ATLJ carries, mm -hmm. which one would you recommend? Maybe suggest a few for value of money or quality or top of the line. Is there a difference? There is a difference. And uh, if you buy the cheap one, you're going to be buying it again and again and again. It will go up yeah. faster. I tend to use, you probably seen it on the show actually, I tend to use this one. It's got a slightly curved edge, which allows me to kind of work in smaller spots. Uh, flat edge is good too when you want to remove um, gate marks. I will actually, uh, on, in the text on this episode on our, on our blog, I will list some ones that I think are really good. That's the Tamiya one yeah. that you got there. The, yeah. the general rule of thumb is that if you're going to be doing a lot of modeling, uh, you want to go with a more expensive pair that's yeah. going to last you. And you might even want to use two. Mm -hmm. You might want to use one pair that you use solely for cutting the, the, the big thick gate mark and then another one for trimming down that gate mark. That's a good point. Uh, the, the, gate, the gate is very, usually pretty thick and you have to remove the, the part with gate from the runner and then take off the gate marks. So people will use a, uh, uh, a cheaper one to try to crudely remove it and then use the more expensive one to trim it down. That's, a, that's an option a lot of people do. So yeah. Sound advice. Good, good nippers will, should last you quite a while. And they just ends up by saying thanks for the great work on the videos and hope you guys keep on going. That's what she said. That is what she said. Next, Freddie Clark. I didn't say that. <laughs> I want to though. Hey, hey Ryan and Sid, I yeah. just finished watching the show and I was curious about building Char's Rick Dom 160th HY2M Glory Series. Yeah. Is there a difference between the PG and those 160th HY2M Glory Series? There is quite a difference. I don't even think that you can really compare yeah. them. Okay. Uh, the PG line continued on simply because of the quality and the engineering was that glorious series, I think. It, yeah, the Rick Dom. Have you no. ever built one? You no, think you I, no, I don't know anybody who has either. I okay. think that was an experiment on Bandai's part that didn't go too well. Okay. Yeah. Failed so. experiment. Well, I mean, you get a big kit, which a lot of people want. It's not that expensive, which is good too. It's just that when you when you want to build something that big, it should involve more than just you know. But what's mega size pads. then? That's for kids, Ryan. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Next, Football J six eight two five. Hey guys, ah, do you know any of the new Zoids? He's asked about the 172nd HMM models being released in the future. Um, I don't actually know about the HMMM. Uh, we'll look into it. Are you talking about Kotobukiya or? or we'll have to look. Yeah, but um, there's two. The reason I actually took your question, sadly I'm not answering it, but there is an Iron Kong Schwartz version yeah. from Kotobukiya coming out, same, I guess, same size. It's going to be the same kit with some different colors and a different accessories. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put a, we'll put a link really in the post. Actually. Yeah, it looks super. So I recommend, if you want it, grab it now because these things were always coming in and going out of stock. Yeah. It was really hard to get hold of. Um, the other one, 72nd, that was coming in was a Psychogene Sorer. Sorer. How do you say that? Sorer. Sorer. From Kotobukiya. Yeah. We also recently had some uh, Takara. Zoids come in, just two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was gonna bring them on the show, and then they, they sold out. I think right away. So. And D style does a couple of Zoids, don't they? Uh, like yeah, yeah, Zoids, they have a D, yeah. D style. That's cool. Okay. And uh, another Zoids question. A question. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. This is from General Rasp. Um, a question for Ryan or anyone who builds Zoids. How poseable are Zoid kits? In the video, it seems like the arms were stiff and didn't move very easily. Is that because the arms don't have enough range of motion, or do the arms need to? flex to release the tension. I think their arms are tight to hold the weight. Well, with this kit in particular, yeah, yeah you're not going to get a lot of range of motion because of how this kit is built to lean. Yeah. If you want to actually get this arm moving in various directions, you're going to have to try and tilt the whole thing yeah. to so it's totally upright. And how many gorillas do you see stand like that? No. Normally not very And also, I mean, if you, I mean, I put this together a bit earlier in the video. Uh, 
I'm also handling it a bit gently. Yeah. Um, just because I need to. Well, when we <laughs> build when we build for the show, we tend to yeah. not put everything together totally because we know we're going to be taking yeah. it apart to show when we film it. So uh, there's that to consider too. Like when you see some parts fall off when I'm showing a model, it's probably because I haven't actually put them on completely. And when you say posable, I mean, do you mean you want to play with it or do you want to just put it in an interesting pose? Because mm -hmm. if you want to just get it into an interesting pose, you could probably work it out. But if you want to just be playing with it on your desk, I'd probably start recommending that you actually glue certain parts down and then I think it'll have no problems posing for you. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, because there's a lot of movement, a lot of intricacy in this kid. Mm -hmm. um, I would like just recommend gluing some key parts yeah. and that way your arms and your legs can move anywhere you want to and you're not scared of bumping things and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I'm very impressed with what Kotobuki has done with this mm -hmm. kit. And uh, yeah, get a Zoids kit. <laughs> Lock pick 10. Do it. Um, would you guys ever think about making an armored core model? I've made Maybe an armored, armored core model when we showed it on the show. Yes, episode something. Well, yeah, way Search back it. when my field days. Search YouTube. 30, 30, 30, 30, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it was mm. when Sid was young. <laughs> Actually, but this brings back uh, uh, brings up an interesting question. Like, what am I going to build next? Um, so, if you guys can just drop a few comments about what you think might be good. Well, if you want to see Ryan build an armor core, yeah, let him know. Um, just yeah, give me a variety of ideas, and uh, I'll then go about ignoring you all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choosing the, the, the Schwartz version. Of the iPhone. I'll build a ship, <laughs> a sailing ship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, just uh, once again, keep an eye on our Hobbylink TV, our Facebook, uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else, Sid? Uh, that's all I've got to say. Keep an eye on Robert's channel. Yeah, tell him um, I say hi. Yeah, he, uh, he does actually grab these kits and actually builds them pretty too sweet. Yeah, he's fast. Yeah. Um, which is good. But yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, done. that's all we got. Oh, the next next episode we hope to do the actual master grade, the oh, whole yes, master grade yes, overview, yes. and uh, I hopefully we'll be showing Mission Andrew Stein in, in its entirety and talking about that as well as part of that episode because I think it's this kid is seems to be the height of the evolution of the master grade right now. So okay. we'll, we'll talk about that and we'll talk about all the other masters. So. And um, yeah, I might have put a top coat on this and um, maybe done some panel lining, and I might ask Sid for some tips. All right. Okay. Looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. See you later. See ya. I gotta get my hands ready for tonight. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do so I'm just dying. A two, three hour session.